Okay, we're here in Barcelona. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with uh, Silicon Angle's continuous coverage, not live, but uh, we're here with Dave Donatelli, who's the Executive Vice President and General Manager of HP's Enterprise Storage, Server, and Networking Division. Notice how I put storage first. Um, Dave, welcome. Dave, great to see you again. Good to have you here. Thanks. So, um, we're here in Barcelona. You guys had a big announcement today, a big press conference. The place was packed. We had about you know, 100 plus uh, folks there. So, how do you feel? Good keynote? I feel great. You know, we're, we're really excited about Converge Infrastructure and the market acceptance we've seen with that. Uh, so far this year, in our first three quarters, our business has grown 24%. We see even higher growth in servers and higher growth in networking. So, um, you know, today's announcement was really adding on to that momentum that we've already seen. Yeah, we had Marius on earlier, and he was talking about uh, the networking growth. That's phenomenal. 198% in total. That, of course, includes the three comp comparison. But 40% organic, I was, that was a good number. So, um, congratulations. Thanks. So, let's talk a little bit about what, um, what converged infrastructure means to HP. What does it mean? Well, basically, you know, simply put, it's our vision and it's a strategy to really change the way data centers are built and the way infrastructure is deployed and designed going out into the future. And, you know, unlike some visions where it's like, here's our vision, wait five years, it's all magically going to happen. I think the really neat thing about Converge Infrastructure is customers can buy it and implement it today. And each and every day, similar to this announcement we made today, we keep expanding the capabilities that people can deploy around Converge Infrastructure. Yeah, so you must have, you talked to a lot of customers, we talked to some plenty of CIOs, and they always tell us that they're sick of buying in stovepipes. I mean, I, I presume you're seeing the same trend, right? No, absolutely. You know, when, one of the neat things about my job, I get to talk to customers and partners all over the world. And, and a key trend we see is that customers want to buy from fewer, larger suppliers. They want to buy from fewer suppliers because it makes their life easier. They want to buy from larger suppliers because they want to make sure whoever they invest in is going to be in business in the years to come. And I think that really uniquely positions HP in this marketplace going forward. The other thing that's really interesting about us is that we're the only large company out there that develops natively its own servers, networking, and storage, and management software. So we really have the unique capability of designing this, these products right from the ground up. And one other thing I want to say about that is, you know, one of our key tenets when we design these products is we design them all to open standards. In addition to wanting to buy from fewer suppliers, probably the biggest question I get from customers there are, are you going to lock me in? I like what you're saying, is this product open? Am I not going to get locked in together? And the great thing about everything we're doing is all built around open standards. We supported open standards for years. We don't fear them, we embrace them. And we think that's really a big differentiator for us in the market. So talk a little bit about that openness. I mean, we, we love open here at the Wikibon and Silicon Angle, but how do you add value in that type of open environment? Talk, talk a, little, a little bit about that. Well, you know, I think you can add lots of value. And, and it's, it's all how you do it. If you look at the way we're developing converged infrastructure, you know, at the hardware level, we're going for a common modular infrastructure. So what that simply means is, you can share parts between areas where you never could before, between storage arrays, between Unix servers and industry standard servers. For instance, now you can swap power supplies around, you can move servers and racks uh, in between, again, industry standard servers and Unix servers. That simplifies everybody's life. It makes it easier for us to execute in our factories, makes it easier for customers to deploy things, makes it easier for us to do maintenance. Uh, make it easier for them to train people. So that's kind of at what most people will consider kind of uh, the commodity type level. But on top of that, we had all kinds of IP that's invented at HP. So one of the examples of that is something called CF sensors. That's technology that we invented in HP Labs that enables us to monitor in real time the power and heat used by servers and storage. And in doing so, we tie that to our management software. And by doing that, you get a real time view of what's happening in your data center you could do things like power capping, so you get a real deterministic view of how much of those resources you're using, and that solves a huge customer problem. Because if you look at most data centers today, since they can't get that real-time view, they have no other choice than to configure the worst case scenario. And what worst case scenario means is that you're way over provisioned. So what people are doing is they're actually building whole new data centers that in many cases they don't need. And they don't need them because they really actually do have that power capability available if they only knew how to manage it and get to it. So let's talk a little bit about um, your converged infrastructure relative to the others. You know, you know this industry is consolidating, everybody sees it, you guys are one of the whales. How would you stack up HP's converged infrastructure story with the competition? Talk a little bit about that. You know, I think, I think we can rationally say and, and very well defend the fact that we are by far in the lead. So why, why do I think I can rationally say that? Because if you look at converged infrastructure, first if you look at servers, we have the largest server market share in the world. And this year alone, we've updated every single server that HP makes. 
We have all new industry standard blade servers, all new integrity servers, which is our Unix server line, all new rack mount servers, and with today's announcement, we announced a whole new architecture of service for service providers. If you look at networking, we have networking products today that are faster, have a higher port density, use half the power, and cost 35 to 40% less than what the current market share leader in, in networking offers. If you look at storage, we have our very exciting acquisition we just closed last week at 3PAR. And 3PAR, we believe, is the storage architecture for the next generation, the next 10 years. It has all the features customers want around private clouds, things like multi-tenancy, the ability to load balance very well, as well as the ability to automatically move data non-disruptively amongst tiers of storage, whether it's uh, flash drives or ATA drives. So if you look at all that together, Dave, I don't think anybody can put that much new technology with all the latest features into the marketplace like HP already has. And then we top that off with our blade system matrix that enables you to manage that as a cloud, all 100% non-disruptive. That's a good story. You've been busy. Very busy year. year so, right? Very busy year. So, um, okay, let's let's talk a little bit more about that. Um, you said uh, that you've completely filled out your converged infrastructure portfolio. That's what you said in the press conference. Yep. Um, so does that mean you're done acquiring companies? Well, what I like to say is this, we're never done, right? Because if, if I tell you we're done, then we might as well all go home. You know, the, the neat thing about uh, information technology business is it's always evolving. There's always more features and functions you can do. And if you look at our philosophy at HP, it's that we always want to do both. We want to do organic development, and we want to do acquisitions. Because we think, you know, we're not arrogant enough to think that we have every great idea in the world, and that's where acquisitions come in to help fill out parts in your portfolio. At the same time, we have an incredibly rich history of doing our own development and we always want to continue that. If you look at our business particular, ESSN, we have over 10,000 engineers. We grew that engineering population more than double digits this year. We announced last week at our annual state meeting that we're going to grow engineering faster than what we grow revenue. So a huge investment you see us in our own organic development. In addition to that though, we've also said that we will continue to look at acquisitions as they present themselves. So let's talk a little bit about the, the R&D side. Sam Palmasano recently said, he said it. He said, I'm, I don't worry about HP because they stopped investing. Has HP stopped investing? Okay, well you just heard me talk about all new servers, all new <laughs> networking, all new storage. So uh, I'm, I will put up, and I mean this sincerely, I will put our technology up against anybody's feature function comparison right down the line. And it was kind of ironic to me that after Sam made that comment, they went out and bought a small networking company in order to try and catch up to organic development we did around our virtual connect technology, which is really innovative converged infrastructure technology. We've already shipped three million ports of it that connects servers to storage and servers out to uh, IP networks. You know, it's interesting. I mean, R&D obviously doesn't always pay off, right? I mean, it's a, you're seeing a lot of large companies now really have a healthy mix of of, of R&D and acquisition. I mean, personally, I think it's a, pr a pretty viable approach to, to go into market. Um, let's talk a little bit more about 3PAR. Uh, we didn't hear much about storage today because I know tomorrow is all about the, is, is all about you know 3PAR drill down. But um, so the 3PAR acquisition was obviously phenomenal. The Pell ping pong match was, was sort of interesting. Um, but 3PAR, uh, you talked about earlier, brings a cloud dimension. So how much of the 3PAR acquisition was sort of cloud related and, and future growth versus trying to fill out the portfolio? Well, here's what's interesting about 3PAR, and I'm going to say the same thing about our store once technology. We have two new technologies that cover multiple market segments with one product. And no one else in storage can say that. So if you look at 3PAR technology, if, and if you look at the traditional storage pyramid, right, of low end, mid tier, high end storage, 3PAR covers mid-tier storage, covers high-end storage. And as you know, most companies have separate architectures and separate products for mid-tier and high-end, most developers of that technology. With 3PAR, customers can start small and grow large. Again, very unique, no one else can do that. In addition to that, it covers the cloud. It has all that software out there that people want in cloud. It's multi-tenancy for security, the ability to have mixed workloads and still meet SLA performance. All those features 3PAR has natively. So what's cool about it, again, is one product, multiple use cases out there. The second thing, store once is the data duplication software that we introduced. Which came out of HP Labs. HP right? Labs, yeah. back to native innovation that we are speaking about. And with that, you know, dedupe is one of the fastest growing spaces in storage. People do client-side dedupe, they do uh, inline dedupe, they do primary storage dedupe. In today's world, prior to store once, you had to buy three separate products to do those jobs. The store once architecture is one architecture that does all three. So we're seeing huge customer uptake of that because again, one product that meets multiple demands, simplifies their life, simplifies their environment, 
and gives them more innovation faster. So that's uh, potentially, and this doesn't exist in the marketplace today, a technology that you could put across the portfolio in, in, in different use cases and not have to rehydrate when you're moving data around. Is that, is that correct? That is, is that, correct. That's sort of the, the, the vision of that, if I understood it correctly. Right. Um, how about, one of the things you, you didn't talk about today, and maybe you're going to talk about tomorrow, and you kind of alluded to it, not this specifically, but your answer, you may have answered this question, but what about big data? You hear a lot about big data in the industry. You saw Oracle's announcements at uh, Oracle Open World, EMC by Screen Pump. What's your angle on, on big data? That's actually a different part of HP. Okay, so, so big data itself and the management of big data happens out of our, our software division. And um, so we already have technologies in that space, and I think you'll hear more from them coming up about what we're doing there. So from a storage standpoint, this is where I think you did answer it. You basically said, hey, we want to be the best infrastructure for Microsoft, the best infrastructure for VMware, the best infrastructure for big data. Right, right. well, yeah, and it's not just big data. It is all those major applications. And I think what's different out there is, you know, you'll hear talk in the industry today on appliances. And believe it, we're, we're a believer in appliances, we'll be shipping appliances. But we do it differently than other people do it. And the whole concept that we do different is this. Our view is horizontal. Don't just buy specialized appliance for one application. Converge infrastructure, we designed to be the best at running Oracle, the best at running Microsoft Exchange, the best at running SQL Server. So that people can make that decision once and then have their choice of applications. Because as you know, everybody runs a mixed environment. They have homegrown apps, they have packaged apps. And what we want to do is provide that one infrastructure that they can manage non-disruptively for all. Technologies we talked about earlier, virtual connect, sea of sensors, all run horizontally across that infrastructure versus trying to solve it all one app at a time. Yeah, the appliance market is, is cool. I mean, it's simple and, and easy to plug in, but a lot of the customers that I talk to complain that they can't scale independently with the, with the appliances. I got to buy you know servers and storage together. So, so I think that's a, a, a need that maybe that horizontal structure, if I understand it correctly, can, can address. The horizontal structure is meant to solve that problem. Right. Okay. So that you can you can scale those elements independently, but again, get a unified way of doing it to simplify the environment. Can we talk a little bit about? I've heard you in the past. You didn't talk about it today, but talk about the. Uh, the supply chain. You've got a more than fifty billion dollar supply chain. Sixty now. Sixty. Okay. How do you Keep leverage growing. that for competitive advantage? Well, I think it's huge. You know, at the end of the day, customers want great IP, but at the same time, I like to say I have not met a customer yet who wants to pay more money next year for what they bought this year. So that puts pressure on everybody in our industry, and in that you always have to become increasingly efficient. At the same time, you always have to be providing that great IP. And, and that's why I think HP's got such a great combination. You already heard me talk about our thousands of engineers who are developing native technologies, but we run those native technologies on industry standard products. And simply put, it's just like in your own personal life, you know, volume begets better pricing. So when you're buying $60 billion worth of components and you're the largest buyer of disk drives in the world, the largest buyer of memory in the world, the largest buyer of Intel processors in the world, chances are you're going to get the best prices. And the bigger our company gets, and we keep growing, the larger that advantage becomes. One of the things that um, I feel like HP could always have done a better job, and I wonder if you brought this ethos to the company, because if you perform a company, does a really good job of it, is this notion of reference architectures. And IBM has red books, and just proving to customers that you know the solutions that they're going to deploy are actually going to work in the field. You know, customer oriented configurations. Are you investing more in that area? Yeah, we are very heavily. And, and we're not only doing it just with HP equipment, and I'll give you an HP example. We, we talked about our, our cloud program, our cloud start program, where you can, you can start up your own private cloud in 30 days or under using the reference architecture that we developed. Yeah, we had Carnegie Mellon on the cube at VMware. It's a phenomenal story. Okay, it's great. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And that is a reference ar architecture like you spoke about. The other thing, though, is our vision extends beyond just the architecture into these primary applications. So you've seen us announce public deals with Microsoft around Azure, around SQL Server, around Exchange. We're doing the same thing with SAP about large memory servers to make SAP run more efficient. So you'll see us do more of like you saw with the CloudStar program, but all the way up through the customer's most popular applications. And again, the whole idea is simplify the environment, make it easier for people to get things up and running faster and, uh, and deployed in production like they want. So what's your take on the cloud? Do you think it's as big as everybody thinks it's going to be? Well, I think it first depends on what's your definition of the cloud. <laughs> so I think the big thing is everybody defines cloud differently. But I will say this, and in my conversations with customers around the world, there is clearly more momentum 
around customers deploying into private clouds. So that market is definitely there. We see demand for it today, and that demand is growing. I think that's going to be a large growing market. In addition to that, we have a bunch of new wave service providers out there. Think of the folks who host, you know, gamers or different applications out there, or the social media applications that, by my definition, are clearly cloud applications that five years ago we weren't talking about. And the amount of infrastructure those people consume is massive. We gave you an example at our press conference today of one of the social players that was buying 40,000 servers at a time. You go to most large businesses, they probably don't have 40,000 servers in total. So, yeah, I think it's a big and growing opportunity. Yeah, so you've announced this big part of, part of the announcement today was the, the, the pod, pod, pod works factory, right? Now, you use the analogy of Henry Ford. Can I get a pod in another color besides blue? <laughs> so, so talk a little bit about Podworks. You know, why is that unique and what, is it, what does it bring to customers in terms of value? Well, again, what we see, you know, back to our discussion around cloud, what we see is people are consuming infrastructure very differently. And there's actually multiple ways people want to consume infrastructure. So if you're a big business out there today, one of the challenges they face is that we've been going through a building boom like crazy of next generation data centers. And depending on your size of company, you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars to, in some cases, billions just on data centers. And as you know, as I'd like to say, if you've ever built anything in your life, as soon as you're done, you always have regrets. Oh, gee, maybe I should have built it this way. Maybe we made a mistake here. The ideas behind Paws are, did, for that use case, is to solve that problem for them. Make it so that we can have a mobile, frankly, uh, recyclable piece of a data center that gives people ultimate flexibility. They can put them in warehouses, they can have them outside, they can park them in the parking lot if they need to. That gives them a data center without having to go through the years of design, years of building next generation data center for themselves. For service providers who are scaling incredibly rapidly, they don't even have time to go build these next generation data centers. So for them, the pod is a perfect solution, again, to get a very highly dense environment of servers, network, and storage all together. So I think it's a really unique alternative for people to buy. What we announced today, and, and we used the analogy, which I thought was appropriate, about Henry Ford, right? Henry Ford bought the car to the masses through having an automated assembly line. And pods need that as well. And so what we've done is, through Podworks, built the first automated factory to build pods. And we can build these things at 15,000 servers at a time. And we can configure them to the needs of whatever people want to do, back to that flexibility I spoke about. And you have a situation, we talk about this a lot at Wikibon and Silicon Angle, where the IT data center, the, the private cloud data centers, if you will, are starting to benchmark themselves against the cloud service providers. And they, they, they probably won't get 100% you know, of the way there, but they've got to get close enough in terms of you know, self-service and on-demand pricing and things like that. And that's correct. The, the pod is a, is a real innovation there that's going to help them get there. The, the pod's a way to get there, and I, I'll tell you also, our automation software, Blade System Matrix, where I've seen our customers benchmark versus outside, just as you said, they're being forced to do that. And through a combination of converged infrastructure and some of the other technologies we talked about today, they can meet or beat those prices. Yeah, and uh, Mark Pardo will have him on later. He's talking about the PUE coming out of the pod of 1.2, which is yeah. astounding. It's right? amazing. And it's in the box, and, and you just get that, that benefit. Um, all right, my last question for you is, uh, what's on your to-do list? You know, what are the objectives in your term and midterm? Well, you know, we, we have actually very ambitious objectives. And simply put, we want to change the entire enterprise infrastructure marketplace. And I, gotta, I say that very seriously. And if you look at the work we've done in the last year, compared to where we were even just a year ago, we believe we've changed the dialogue in the marketplace. We've certainly changed buying behavior, and you've seen that in, in the financial results we've posted. And we've changed the direction of technology. And I know that's a very ambitious goal, but if you look at Hewlett Packard, we have the heritage, we have the scale through things like our supply chain, we have the engineers, and we have the market presence to make that truly happen. And so what we're doing is really driving that vision forward. You've seen us be very aggressive this year in what our offering is. We're very excited about what we have. But I can tell you, Dave, we are not standing still. And we have even more exciting things coming, and you'll hear more and more from us next year as well in this space. Dave Donatelli, uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You've put together a great team, and it, and it, it continues to grow. Um, and, and we wish you the best of luck, and uh, thanks for having us here in Barcelona. Thanks, Dave, great to be with you. All right. Can I ask a question while we, because we got cut there? So, uh, Dave, the personal computer and then client server create huge productivity booms for the, the worker, the uh, enterprise worker, then transcended to the home, but eventually the enterprise was the most productive. Now we're seeing Apple and uh, apps such as that 
they're driving faster innovation on the consumer side. And some say enterprises are lagging behind. Talk about the vision of how converged infrastructure fills that gap for enterprises to catch up, if you will, to what the productivity was seeing on the consumer side. Yeah, so, so the real challenge that many, many enterprises face is that their infrastructure grew so rigid and so diverse that they got very, very slow in their time to market in order to adapt to change. And you know, it's really not uncommon that if you were to call an enterprise today within any large company around the world and say, I need new infrastructure provision, the answer you're going to get back is typically weeks to months. And as you know, in the consumer world, you can get that in hours to minutes. So a lot of the technology we bought out, for instance, Blade System Matrix, is all designed around taking what was weeks to months and doing it in minutes to hours. And I'm really pleased to say we have real world customers who are doing this today who've been able to make that conversion. And I think there's going to be continued pressure on enterprises to speed up and also to consumerize over time. Employees want to bring in their own devices. They want that flexibility in infrastructure. They even want to provision their own infrastructure, which again, we allow the capability of provisioning today as well. And I think that trend's going to only accelerate from here. How has the culture changed within the enterprise from an IT perspective? In the old days, you had silos, networking guys, app guys. What are you seeing with your customers, and how is HP looking at this new culture within the enterprise? Well, I think customers around the world have been, as you can imagine, over the last two years, really under tremendous strain. And the strain has been due to the global economy, and due to the fact that because of the global economy, budgets might not be what they want it to be. And with that, it's really forced creativity around how they organize and how they prioritize what they want to do in their environments. And that has, I think, led to positive change in that the silos, which have been in place for decades, are starting to break down out of necessity and people are looking to manage more IT as a shared resource versus separate fiefdoms and silos. Thanks. Okay, we're here in Barcelona. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. We're here with uh, Silicon Angle's continuous coverage, not live, but uh, we're here with Dave Donatelli, who's the Executive Vice President and General Manager of HP's Enterprise Storage, Server, and Networking Division. Notice how I put storage first. Um, Dave, welcome.